Hello everybody and welcome to matchup numero dos of today. Instead of the shapening, we're going into the dredgening. And it's going to be Bubblesavra playing for team... I was gonna say Eternal. Wow. Old habits die slow. Team Ariando, of course. Against the survivor team of Team Synapse. So, let's see if their reaction time is as quickly as the nerves communicate in their body, according to their name. So, the first chase already beginning. It's going to be dark on a rather strong palette, but we do know very well about Dredge's extremely powerful ability, especially on this map. A great thing out here by Dark. I was also really expecting him to just skip out of the room and just try to make it to the vault. Yeah, exactly. That he's got around the corner here, but he did actually fake that out beautifully. We'll be able to find the next unbelievable safe palette. Might as well drop them early because Dredge can also, if he really feels like it, can try to make an effort to zone the survivor on this. Dark is still stuck in this room, but he's holding those corners beautifully. And he will not lose any kind of distance. But he's going to leave the chase now because Bubba wasn't able to catch up whatsoever. And there's Mordo, the team leader, being found in the middle now. Elm playing Nancy, trying to make it to the next safe ballot. They're just dropping these right from the get-go, not even wasting any time to go to any of the un on the unsafe versions of the lines. Just gonna throw every single god pellet down right from the get-go. Bubba using his ability, faking it. Was I was about to say he's probably gonna teleport to one of these post generators, but instead just gonna go for the den kick. And that's also the second use of eruption we see for today. The other was by Elysium in the shape game by uh, that was played by Zeno. They are Bubble still Hi. trying to find <laughs> fi <laughs> Good morning there. Palo will be found and this might just be finally the first hit. Yep, Bubble just gonna push right through that pallet. Palo makes his way down without getting stuck on the stagger that you get from dropping down there and also just leaving the room. Very, very good start for the survivor team here, delaying the first hit for as long as possible. This time Bubbo not going to push through it, but this is such a difficult position for the oh, survivor! What? What? But literally, <laughs> Pali is just vanishing, turning into a ninja Reprise. and making sure that Bubbo is nodding. Yeah, this is the moment where you open your window mid-game and throw the PC outside on the street. This was so unfortunate and this is now going to be Pali now oh. reaching the next room though even though this pallet has already been broken but this delay <laughs> might come in very punishing for Bubba's after here synapse has quite some additional time on the generators here one generator oh. Oh. might be finished ace moving around it i don't think that is going to be quick enough oh my god the it great should be the first one but actually He's able to defend it! That is insane by Babo, and he's also deciding to stop the second generator right next to it. So keeping the spiders busy is a good move here. But now after the unmoving, the immediate teleportation to the locker in the courtyard, making sure that this one is be under pressure. Scorcho Painress has done such a phenomenal job here because this generator defense is going to cost the survivor team now. So it's such a back and forth here. He missed the great school pick in the middle in the heat of the moment there. I saw that, I watched that very closely. Dark did have the the opportunity to pop that pop the generator, but he only got the good skill pick instead of the great. And Pallet goes wide here to get the fast forward, but to no avail. The down is still going to come through, and Bubbo will claim his second down of the game. Never mind, he's instead going to teleport right over to Yatos and fake the pick up. Beautifully done by Bobo. Really creative play as well. I thought he already started the animation there, but he did not. And instead, Guz managed to get the hit onto Yatos. Crash out, crash him off the next generator, get some more eruption value from, and no pain res yet from Pale, but the eruption is going to allow him to uh, stop this generator from popping just yet. He's gonna try to find Yatos upstairs, but the teleport is not going to get him anywhere near or give him any more information on where the survivor exactly is. The scratch marks are a very slim indicator of where he might have been gone. Gone, but Bobo's not gonna find him just yet. The killer instinct gonna come in here and help him spot the survivor work on the generator. Bobo in quite a lot of trouble here. Only two stages and there's a tremendous amount of generator pressure exerted already by the survivor team. Yeah, the survivor team needs to find this 
full grasp and full control back on the game, especially if Pali is going to find his elimination here, because then they are going to find themselves in a spot where the efficiency on the pressure onto the generators is greatly reduced. So mm. they better find a good solution. And the only solution I see is that the next chase that is going to happen is going to take quite some time. They might even want to go for a reset here, but Babo now on the tail of the survivors once again does ignore the injured survivor not entirely sure if he caught that second survivor it seems like yatos is getting away with it but we do see the next teleport coming through next to the locker making sure that this generator is regressing and that's really important because synapse managed to get four generators done in the last chase so end game is not too far babo needs a quick down he needs pressure onto the survivor team, alternatively monitoring all these generators what? here. There's going to be Mordo found once again, has progressed the generator here in the hallway, has this pallet around this hall here. The next one in the library is also still available for him, which he is going to take now. So this is the chase we would need. A good setup, a good chase time is what it takes right now to complete the generators and these Confident mind games is what they are going to need to achieve the end game here. The survivor back there already on the generator. Mordo kind of running towards him. Might be a little bit of a problem here. Meanwhile, Dark back upstairs here. So it gets a little bit chaotic in the trial. The survivor's trying to figure out what's the most efficient way to push it through into the end game here. Meanwhile, trying to be aware that Bobozafa is constantly teleporting between these generators here, trying to throw these survivors off, even waiting if there's anyone he can attack. And it seems like he made a decision going onto this generator. The survivor has left already. The communication is on point. We're breaking through a couple of locked uh locker no, the locker sounds so wrong but it's actually <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah next generator right here dark pressuring it as well leaving early communication on top it's kind of like whoever makes the next mistake is going to be in a difficult spot here i'm still confused as to why they let Pali die on the on his hook there because yeah, i think yeah. they had plenty of time to go in for the save and now they've sort of Force themselves or put themselves into this 3v1 now. They only have rather unsafe pallets left available. But we're, yep, just gonna put the pallet. There's no point in trying to use his ability here. I also like that he's using the same skin that's used in the artwork for the for the rule set. It's got the I don't know the exact name because I, I never remember skin names. They're quite long. Oh, Yata's card of Guardian, but he, he's wearing the, the, the Roman hat. I'm pretty sure. Oh, the, the, the soldier helmet that that's supposed to be. That does look like it. Oh, Yato's going for the... Trying to really force, force himself with this 50 50 and not dropping the pallet and trying to run to the next room. So Bubba's just going to profit heavily from this. And he had two, at one point, he did have two survivors down at the exact same... Um, at, the same at the same time. So, but Dark was able to get the pickup in time onto Mordo for Bubba not to profit from it any further. Using his ability as if he's playing nurse, teleporting around the map constantly. And he will be able to find Dark and he does manage to get the slash through the window here. Right before Dark manages to get the fastball all the way, uh, all the way acted out. So difficult now, we've got two survivors injured in this room. One double back by Bobo might just change the outcome of this game. We can see the Yunjin player Yatos leaving the room really early on. And now it's just Mordo stuck on the pallet in the corner. Now this is Red Red's ability once again shines the 50-50 and Bobo is going to be able to capitalize off it. He does manage to get the down onto Mordo before he reaches the piano palette. He's not going to be allowed to play any lovely tune for Bobo. Bobo doesn't care, he just wants blood. That's going to be the fifth stage of the game and also the next fresh. That's... What's about the team was didn't quite pay attention to it. Not entirely sure as well. I think though the generator definitely oh. got a chunk here, and this is kind of what Babo needed, trying to go for the confident 
break through the pallet again doesn't work though because the survivor anticipates it and stuns the killer in time but another very good teleport by Bubble, putting the survivors under pressure. He's constantly doing it. They seem to stay with a pretty cool hat here and uh, not getting too nervous. On the other hand, you can see here Bubble not teleporting too early, not using his ability too quickly, making sure that the survivor is really locked in one of the corners and then going for the M1 and ensuring the down. Now we can even see how difficult it is to keep the survivors under control here, moving closer and closer towards the end game because we now see the slug coming through we want to keep the pressure onto the survivor team and that is going to be a second down awarded to Bubazavre this only leaves Mordo who has taken up Dark right now so there's so much going on on the killer side on the survivor side are they able to make a recovery is it going to be Mordo and Dark taking short chases and being eliminated and into the 4k and Bubazavre once again with great patience here. Two downs once again. Responsibility back onto Mordo. The team captain has to ensure a lot of safety and a lot of confidence for his team here. He is responsible of picking him up the second time in a row. And Bubazava, I think we will not see a hook. I think if you have this right now, you really want to finish it. I'm also really loving the way Bubu is showing the potential for this killer. It does look like he's just playing nurse the way he's using the locker yeah, teleportations yeah. it's absolutely stunning and how smooth this gameplay is we saw i think it was yeah it was dark early in the middle of the hallway and Bubba just teleports straight up to him that was absolutely wonderful to see and now Mordo, it's his job as the last man standing to find any way to rescue his dying teammates just gonna lock this Lock one of the lockers also. That's also one thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how Dread works. If there's two lockers next to each other and you lock one, Dread is forced to teleport to that yes. lock, to the locked locker. You know, we should try to make a tongue twister with that. Ah! Mardo locks the locked locker. Or something. <laughs> the lock Bobo locker. Un Bobo unlocks the locked locker that's been locked. Uh, th that's been locked by Mardo, which was previously an unlocked locker. To make it a locked locker. Something like that. Now, now you're losing me. <laughs> <laughs> my, my brain Probably losing the audience push. as well with that. <laughs> yeah. Saying locker Every... ten times in a row. That's funny. Gonna... Locker, 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 locker. Is this funny yet? We, we're gonna lose half of our viewership after, after this <laughs> because they cannot keep track of what we're talking about. I mean, that's something Mordo. to be proud of, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but Dark Mordo and Yatos also need to keep track of the locked lockers here and need to make sure that they are going to have a longer run going into. Uh, or going for that final generator, the dark will be put down into the dying state once again. Half of the bleed out meter is already expired, as we see. So, Bubazavo here really, really trying to take pressure onto the survivor team. Luckily, Mordo locked this locker, so Bubazavo <laughs> had some time to go out of this lock locker. And now he's porting from unlocked locker to a locked locker <laughs> to make sure that there we go. the next survivor. Um, survivor team, definitely we have to point out, great fight, um, putting up a good comeback time and time again, but I slowly feel like that Bubble is getting into the advantage position here. He teleports to the lock locker to make it another lock locker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're going to fall because who is going to be able to teleport to the next generator? Just apply a lock once more. Managers to also find... Or one of the injured survivors at least. The firecracker comes through perfectly timed. Will blind bubble on the way down. So he loses the track of the Nancy slightly. Mordo will be found right after, however, using the killer instinct that's coming in clutch. So it has been coming in clutch so many times throughout this trial. Now Bubble's just waiting for his ability to return so he can use it. Try and zone the apples out. And yeah, he's just gonna. I also really like how he keeps switching up his playstyle. You've seen Bubble use and that never actually teleport to the husk and just stay in his ability and then creep up slowly on dark and we've also seen more creative approaches like the one we've just seen with great displays of patience by Bobo waiting out for the perfect moment to return or come out of his shell <laughs> literally and then strike it I was gonna say is this a position on the gen where you can't kick it? No. Okay but it goes for the double kick for the minus 20% off the gen immediately. Better than pop confirmed. No, of course not. Still, one survivor down once more and two survivors injured. This is turning into stalemate. 
Yeah, this is now turning into a very long, we could say, standoff here between Synapse and Ariandel. As we pointed out earlier, whoever makes, makes the next mistake will be in a great disadvantage here. Babu might get too greedy at some point, trying to force the 4k by all means, and Synapse might lose their patience and push a generator too hard. So far, none of them is losing their nerves of steel yet. <laughs> But uh, Babo is getting hook stage after hook stage, so the time is definitely ticking on the clock of the survivor team. We do have Dark now moving into the next room. I feel like we have dropped almost all pallets of the uh, Midwich Elementary School. This is one of the drop pallets that is still remaining for them. Trying to go a little bit on the back and forth here, and it's going to end in the down. So Yatos in Dark once again, and guess who has the responsibility to pick them up? Captain Mordo for the third time in this trial here. Yatos being on the ground, so this might be a bleed out very, very soon. We actually had Babysitter banned for Huntress because Mordo had to bring it four times for his team. <laughs> <laughs> so this is slowly becoming the, the door of World War One as we see both Sides trying to defend this so desperately. Bobo might be a killer, but he's got the iron will to defend this map. Uh, as I've already stated previously, Midwitch and and the Dread. That's a per that's a perfect pair. But it seems like Mordo is finally found in the yeah. back of the basement, and that is potentially the 4K at one generator remaining. And I say potentially because our dear Dark might also just be dealt. Yeah, the good thing for the killers is that it's only style points exactly. now. Um, they they do not lose anything for the win condition anymore. As long as the survivor was hooked before, they get everything. So they get the hook stages and the fresh hook. Only if it's a fresh hook, then they get the three stages, but not this fresh hook for win condition three. Um, so therefore, Bobozavka, it's all about the style now. Will it be an appropriate 12 hook in this game, or will you have to take a minus rep on your Steam profile for slugging <laughs> in a custom party game? This is going to be the interesting question for us, and it seems like that Bobozavka is actually losing a few style points here because Dark is nowhere to be seen or nowhere to be found. Mordo has a little bit of a longer time, but that is a very clean 4K on one generator remaining that also sets the win mm -hmm. condition very yep. clear. You need to get all generators done, but you don't have to worry about getting it out anymore. So Ariandel definitely feeling very good here. We were talking about the minus rep, the only thing that is going to happen after this trial, and the worst part is they don't even get blood points for this. Come on. This is yeah, Mordo will... <laughs> Mordo will die on it now also, as Dark has bled out in the corner that he was hiding. Somewhere we shall never know, it is a secret only to, only to Dark and the team. The naps, you see Ariander with a lot of momentum coming into this trial. I really like the part where Bobo dredged all over the survivors and just secured the 4 kill, one generator remaining. Quite the high win condition, but as I've pointed at the intro, uh, during the introduction of this trial, or the campfire chat even before that, I've really seen any kind of dredge on this app, so there's still lots and lots of room for Team Synapse to potentially turn this first set around and maybe, out of the blue, win the set win. But right now, it is looking very favorably for Team Ariandel after game number one. Right after a short break, we will return to you with the response by Team Synapse on the killer side. Stay tuned, everybody. Central Wizard Elementary School is our map for the dredge. <laughs> we have Yogurt with Sloppy Butcher, one of the painful perks for the survivor team. You have to take quite some time on the resets here. Will be interesting to see if we see as many teleports as Buzar has shown us. Mathis described it very beautifully. It's such a smooth gameplay uh, that we have seen from the killer of Ariandel, and now it's going to be the responsibility of Yokart to show us a great killer game for Synapse. The win condition is very clear. The survivor team needs five generators. They do not need to worry about any escape here, so uh, that makes it very easy to keep track. We always appreciate when teams are making it so simple for us. And the first survivor in Chase will be hard work. One of the most experienced survivors in the scene oh, yeah. has 
millions of games and millions of difficult problems and challenges he faced in Com DBD. So whenever you need an answer to anything, then you can go and ask Hartwell about it. Let's see how he's performing in his first chase here. We do try to force him into the M1 that is going to work out, but he has the access to the rest of the map, can hold W down the hallway, so not the best, uh, not the worst position to be in here as a survivor right now, especially running into the corrupted area, knowing that your survivor team is going to progress these generators. If he stays alive a little bit longer, it can already be a pretty good start for our survivor team. Mm. Ah! That is going to be the first day on Hardwell draws first blood. Jokob will be able to acquire first kick stage before any of the generators have popped but we're seeing a very close progress here by Bubus then that's very close to popping we'll probably see that around the same time that it comes through and as you pointed out also the central visiting school let's find out what the house Jokob is is put into by the sorting hat let's go oh <laughs> now that's some bm there come on, yeah. come on man pops the bed right in his face Jokob was ready to kick it but well, there was a nice sitting on the other side of the map Actually, really, I ironically also, Dark was the survivor playing Ace in the previous game. He was not able to pop the den. That was 99. And now we see Bobo succeeding in that. Maybe he had a great skill check that made the difference. Because in the last trial, right before the generator popped, Dark did get a skill check and he hit a good one. If he had hit the great one, that den would have actually popped. It's the battle of the Aces here. <laughs> who can finish the generators and who can't and this time it is Ariandel taking the lead here they have two generators completed already and one stage is waiting there on the hook it seems like Hartwell will progress into the second stage and that is a common competitive strategy that can really work out if you have a relatively early down you can use the time to progress the survivor into second stage or even get the elimination the problem is with three generators already being done, I'm a little bit afraid that the time might not be enough for the killer to progress Hardwell into the elimination and get away with the win condition because only two more generators and then the game is over for Synapse and Ariandel is going to take the first set point here. So what we should see very soon is a teleportation away from the hook, just as we see right now. And we better see some injuries and also some downs. Oh, what was that? Oh, <laughs> Jokob immediately getting the undetectable status effect by the add-ons that he's also got. Seeing now with you know, that down at the start didn't really do much for for our Jokob because the survivors were split so well on the generators. Teleport downstairs is not going to be enough since he's still stuck behind the safe pallet that Hardo was able to use. We see the nurse gameplay coming in here also. Maybe it took Bobo as an example in the previous game. Hardo in chase once more. Magic does take the hit and Hardo is still on the run. He is the survivor that under no circumstance can go down because that's going to enforce 3v1 for Team Ariandel. And that's really what Rockup is forced to play off, but I don't think he's going to have enough time here. He's going to use his ability here, trying to outplay this extremely safe pallet, but Hardwell makes the right choice by just leaving. Goodbye, see ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. And Hardwell makes tons of distance here. Still has the exhaustion perk up his sleeve. He's going to be able to use Blind to connect to the next room, but sadly, he's got the terrible desk room that has no child to play in whatsoever. Hardwell will bite the dust. And it seems like our survivor's doubling in the middle off. Oh, not yet going to pop this generator. That might be a pop goes the weasel. That else either can still do as Bobo is running out the school doing nothing. Maybe he's still trying to find a sorting out. He's not he's, he's not in a house just he's not in any of the whole houses just yet. Still trying to find a sorting out. Trick pet picking his team. But oh, oh, come on man, you're going to the room. We all know. Jokob gonna go for the kick. Oh yeah, also let's talk about the adults that he's got. So he's got the mouthing to school which increases the charge rate of the Night 4 while survivors are injured by 66% uh, percent per second. And the Broken Door, which gives him the an increased duration of the 20, of the uh, duration of the night, Nightfall by another 20 seconds. So Yaka also just trying to buff out his Nightfall and get it as often as possible by with, uh, for every survivor in that's kind of similar to Thanatophobia. Makes the claw stronger, the more survivors are injured. And as we see Bobo get hit now, that's going to be a boot to his ability as we see it progressing much quicker. Jokot still trying to 
Oh, well, that's not the indicator for Nightfall. The indicator for Nightfall is something completely else. Come on, man. Uh, Jokot's still trying to find the survivor still in the middle. Should try to get another down here to use pop and slow the survivor game down. But it doesn't seem like it's going to happen very soon. Jokot has to really hurry up if he wants to beat the win condition. Because right now, the way it looks is that he's probably going to either tie or lose. There we have him again, the insane ace by Babo after playing an insane dredge game and finishing the generator in front of the killer. He's now on an absolute fantastic run right here. We see the back and forth trying to force the killer into the teleportation sound. Perfect possible timing and yet, unfortunately, it's not enough um. because the loop around the pallet is a little bit too long. We do see some auras here, two survivors in the courtyard. That's a very, 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 very valuable information here. As uh, Jokart now decides to go for the slug, we can tell how much the killer needs some pressure mm. here because the win condition is just too completely generous generators away. So you better get it down. Oh. You better keep the survivors even more busy. And even though we have some distance on the survivor that is currently holding W, there are no valuable resources. So just a little bit of sofa looping that is not going to delay too much. But at least they are getting bubble up in the distance three survivors however have to play against dredge and have to complete two more generators from the first side it is a very very difficult challenge and with Babo going down here this challenge is now becoming even more difficult and once again we see the slug very understandable here you want to apply your pop close to visa could even go for it as you know where the unhook happened and now yokart is turning into a killing machine yeah, we see the pressure that's possible once he's got every single survivor injured. It's just teleporting over and over all around the map. Probably gonna use it. Oh, beautiful fake here by Lamadic. Jokat could have actually swung for that, but he is gonna do it now. And the thing is, Jokat has to play off the slugs right now because he's only got four stages. So it's gonna be really difficult to play off the stages. But still, that's gonna be another seven potential pop pops that he can have, pop goes that he can have. I'm intentionally not saying eight because the eight one isn't gonna matter because that's obviously it's gonna be the death of the last survivor but he's still got that many pops left in the trial end <laughs> we, we see a rima building a house here blocking out your card you're not coming in you can huff and puff all you want but the wooden house is not gonna come down because it's not made of straw and your card will still be able to get the down onto a rima using his ability and just what are the two other inlets one is doing now your take a stroll over to the, gen uh, the generators downstairs also a really fortunate position for Jokart to be in because all the generators are downstairs next to the courtroom generator this is a really nice setup that he's got other lockers could potentially still teleport all around the map of course but it's still gonna waste time if he has to go upstairs and downstairs all the time and this time and this way he can stay downstairs and apply all the individual pressure not decide to go for the quick onto Rima ever waited for the other instead it's just gonna teleport right next to our survivors that are healing in the corner but Jokart actually did not see them if he sees them then Sloppy's gonna kick him but if if they actually managed to get the heal off here that would be huge no they decided against it yeah, and this is decision making might backfire a little bit yeah. because when you, especially when you go against Sloppy Butcher, right, a reset and healing your injuries is so incredibly painful that going oh. for the decision of let's keep the generators progressed um, is much more likely. But then if you decide to stay injured and go for the generators, you really need to slam the gens. And this didn't work. And now we see them adjusting their decision a few minutes afterwards, they are now going for the heal through the sloppy butchers, but it might already be too late because Joker X um, has gained so much confidence now. He has gained so much pressure and um, he has a very good understanding of where the survivors are, how much progress we have on each individual generator. So he has everything it takes. Mm. And on top of that, 60 seconds away from eliminating the second survivor here. So yep. we said beforehand, very rough win conditions. Survivors just need to get all the five generators done. But when we have a very good killer, we realize how easy it's spoken to say we just need five generators. And our dredge here from Synapse is showing us an absolutely role model performance. Will be really, really interesting because a remote bubble and Le Magic, on the other hand, very oh. experienced survivors with millions of hours in comp DVD, they might be 
Uh, able to steal for this challenge, but ah. it was a very, oh. very nice teleport. And Arima is also rotating in for a body block, so he's not sitting on a generator right now. Flashlight won't help anymore as well. And now we're down to two survivors facing two generators right here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that even Hatch wouldn't matter right now because uh, we have as first week mission the generator counter. So. We need at least one more generator and then a hatch escape. Otherwise, it is not going to be any change for our survivor team. Babo and Chase, once again, Arima being injured, so easier to locate later on. This pallet is still available. This was a very optimistic swing. <laughs> if that would have hit, we would have shut down the entire orc. But this is now going to be Babo in this room here. He needs a very long run. Arima either setting up for an endgame play after getting the next generator done or figuring out something else but this is now high pressure for our survival team yeah and realistically then they will never be able to pop this last generator because the expected chase time is just too low with dredge on this map now especially since both survivors are injured jokan has eruption applied to now all of the three all of the generators in this closely knit web i'm uh, yeah, he actually does have all four generators on this one side of the map, but not a single of these survivors have decided to go for the upstairs generator. And with the down on Bobo, that is going to virtually mark the GG, as we've now only got one survivor left standing, and Yoka has a slight hunch where Arima might be located. Bobo is still on the ground, could still go for the bleed out, but don't think it's gonna matter much here. Six stages. We do have to look at the stages, however. We did see in the previous game, uh, our killer was able to get, um, or Bubu was able to get many more stages throughout the trial, and Jokart is just playing completely off the tunnel, of the isolated tunnel elves. He went for the kill on Hardwell at the start, and then he t is instinct uh, instinctively, yeah, <laughs> that also, to be honest. And then he, uh, uh, then he intentionally went for the three hooks onto the magic also to get these survivors out of the trial. And now he's got two stars left standing and six stages left to give. But what help with the pop goes also because he still has so many potential more prep goes left available. He is absolutely not going to use. He only needs to hear the injured arima now for this game to wrap up. The only thing we need to point out now is that Bubo Zavre, if he would be... Ah, no, never mind. We have the generator win condition. Yep, Don't exactly. mind me, ladies and gentlemen. I was thinking about locked lockers again. That kept me busy a bit, but we find Babu yeah, anyway. So, Arima in a difficult spot. As the generator counter is the first win condition, we would need a completed generator and then a hatch escape. So, this is one hell of a challenge that is on the shoulders of an <laughs> injured survivor right here. Um, Will be inter oh, ah, hello. <laughs> and there he is. That's going to be our wonderful <laughs> Whatever that means, but welcome. I guess it's like we are welcome, yeah. But this is going to be the quick down. So this is insane because we hyped how insane Bubble played the dredge on Midwich Elementary School. We said this was a performance out of this world, and then Synapse is coming with this very difficult wind condition and they are putting the bar even higher. So, absolutely insane performance. And uh, since Synapse was not in the favorite role here and everyone would have said Ariandel is going to take it, the chances for a tiebreaker Chucky have just tremendously increased. So let's hope Ariandel is taking the second set, even though Mordo, I'm sorry, but uh, Chucky just have to, has to be played today. <laughs> These teams want the good guy out. Come on. It's not yeah. like they don't. But yeah, beautiful performance by Jokard. I already said in the Gamboy chat, I always love how Jokard plays Killer. And when I saw him at the bottom of that roster, kind of hiding himself as well, hiding from the opposition in this tournament. But he did come out as the Killer for Team synapse here and could not have a more a better performance in this trial against survivors that are a force to be reckoned with was able to re uh, reproduce the uh, similar approach when it comes to playstyle as Bobo did in the past game and sort of plain red like the nurse which is really really fun to watch so yeah <laughs> all i can say is the producers probably don't want to put me as the cast anymore for any of other dredge games because I'm just gonna talk about lock lockers all the time and the audience. <laughs> so yeah, 
that's going to wrap up set number uh, set this set for uh, between team uh, uh, Ariandel and Synapse. Set point does go to our lovely team Synapse here after Yokot's brilliant performance on the killer. And after a quick break, we will return with set number two. Xenoboid on Ratchet Job, picked by Synapse also. Can't forget, this was actually Ariandel's pick for the killers. So, my area of synapse is coming in with loads of momentum here, much better than what Ariando was hoping for to begin with. We'll see you after a short break. Stay tuned, everybody. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to set number two between Ariando and Snaps after a very close results in the previous trial the dredge set that was hardly decided in favor of a team synapse by yokart's dominant performance on the killer side for his team getting the 4k at two generators remaining we now have synapse going into better pace than their opponent ariandel into set number two with cenobite on the wretched shop and do not be mistaken the reason why this isn't dead dog is because of the well, balance that we've decided to go with and wretched shop a rather uncommon unconventional map for the center boy is going to be even more interesting to see vicky perform his team as the center boy we're also seeing a very classic that you would also expect for this killer to use the sloppy butcher because they just they, that that perk is just so powerful with the trains the moment that chain on kicks in, it's basically impossible to heal. And that's gonna stack so, so well in this trial. If Biggy manages to get several hits onto the survivors, you also have to keep in mind, this is Team Synapse's killer pick. And the dredge was actually Ariandel's killer pick that they ended up losing. So even better, and it could, it could really not be any more favorable for our killer right now as Yariuma takes the first that draws first blood at five generators remaining. And we haven't seen much then progress just yet. And even if we do, Vigi is gonna make short notice of that with the pain resonance that he's obviously trying to get as early as possible with downing Arima. Yeah, you better get that first down here relatively quickly. Wouldn't even be surprised if we see a survivor rotating in anytime soon yeah. here and taking a protection hit, knowing these Boom. people from Eternal and seeing that the generator they completed is not far from the current chase. I really wouldn't be surprised if there's someone rotating in. Let's see how they are going to move on here. Arima, though, has a great setup, but also makes the most use of it. Really, oh, really well played here. Beautiful. Second generator already. And this is where Arima is known for. Someone who can easily go on a long chase at the beginning, who can take a lot of responsibility. And this is Caster's Curse, ladies and gentlemen. And that's why I'm huh. handing over to Mathis. Why you jinxed it, man? Come on. Yeah. Arima is going to finally bite the dust after two generators have already popped and Exiles then also doesn't have much progression. That pain resonance suffering. is not as well timed as it could be. But of course, that's not what Kiki's doing. That's Arima's incredible chase at the start of the trial here. We also do see the classic add-on combination of the original pain and the impaling wire, impaling wire help in the chase whenever a survivor breaks the chain another one spawns right after and original pain probably the strongest tunnel out feature in this game the moment a survivor is under you just chain them you can do it very far away and also very safely you just have to wait for the animation to run out or the the, the animation and the moment they break free from the chain through any means they are put into deep which means the the BT or the base could BT that you'd get or even through the perk is immediately cancelled out and just allows Jiggy or whatever else Cenobite player to tunnel out extremely quickly and he really needs to stay close here. he has to get the second stage otherwise all of this would be to waste the 60 seconds completely wasted but our survivor is going to go into the second stage now after Bubu's unsuccessful attempt to save our Arima on the Circling back, Excise now, the next one. 
is going to be Ooh. all up here in just a few centimeters here. Exiles wow. going to stay healthy and will take a run. We still have this pallet right here, but he won't make stay it because of the full chain. <laughs> By G I, I'm, I shouldn't cast. <laughs> I, I, I'm jinxing. jinxing uh, maybe it. I should cast about the killer more and jinx the killer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the killer wow. and he misses. They what is this? I'm <laughs> this is uh, Exile's now going to be on the run here. This tournament is rigged, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you say Exile's and he goes down right after. Yeah, I'm, I, I shouldn't talk anymore. But very, very nice performance by the Survivor team so far. 75. <laughs> in the main building right here third generator coming out so potentially four generators very soon here so um a lot of pressure onto jiggy on the other hand i don't want to judge synapse too soon anymore we have seen your card in the previous trial look difficult in the early game as well and then he pulled it into a win so let's see what both sides can deliver here excise will very likely be saved soon because jiggy doesn't even care about tunneling or camping or securing any hook stage the, my guy is just aggressively hunting down the next stage and i really like to see this confidence from him he is trying to eliminate arima from the trial as that's the only survivor that is currently standing in second stage quite obviously it is the case since there's only three stages in the trial achieved so far jiggy is trying to therefore eliminate this player as early as possible that's why we see it running in for the second time now trying to take it but you will successfully but that's just going to give him an extra well not really a stack but an extra application of sloppy butcher the unsafe pallet comes in but we see arima skipping it hoping to find the edge map pallet here maybe trying to loop back into it but to no avail our survivor arima will be the first one to bite the loss the unsung hero of the early game will now face the end of the road as you see three survivors left standing but two of which are injured and once again we are at this point with these two injured survivors where we have to take the difficult decision especially with slobby budget should we take it safe should we give some time to the killer go for all these resets <laughs> or should we push it through last time it didn't work for ariandel let's see if it works out this time bubble just gets rid of the chains in time and gets the vault here and then in the perfect moment rotating oh. around the can two generators getting completed into the end game no one escapes death activates here so we do have a little bit of a Speed Boom. boost and the ability to down very quickly. And that is looking like the consideration of a slug, but we just keep the stages that are available for us. Babo will go onto the hook and Hartwell and Axis very likely will just take what they have available oh. here. But Axis oh. at least takes a look before considering escaping here is right next to the know it as well so they could go for it babo is a fresh hook so it would definitely be painful to leave right now. it wouldn't really matter for exiles to trade himself in here however because this survivor is already hooked to once the same as Bubble is at the moment so this is going to be the seven stages i'm really happy to see Cenobite on this map also because i really cannot tell what the expected amount of stages would be for this killer on the map i mean most comp players are gonna go uh, come on bro it's obvious what this what uh, how many stages there should be but it's comp tournaments we've seen any kind of result with any killer any killer so yeah. nothing can really be expected anymore the climate has just changed completely where back in 2021 i can still very vividly remember how we had killers 4k on one to three gens with nurse and you would base off your win in scrims on tournaments if you pop all gens against the nurse, that's considered a win. But that just is not accurate at all anymore. And we see that now with Cenobite getting seven stages in the first trial. And I'm really curious to see what's going to happen in the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cenobite on the Ratched Shop. Let's see what Babo can do. We have once again this very painful sloppy butcher and know it as well. Corrupt Intervention and Scorch Pain Rest. We do have a win condition of uh, around about seven stages. If they would get it on four survivors, they would take the win here. So eight stages on three or seven stages on four. 
will be the win for Ariandel. That's a doable challenge on the Cenobite, but it all comes down to how good you're playing in the early game. And yeah. we already have our first survivor here, but no injury yet. If this survivor can go for a longer run, Bubble will be under pressure. Really still have no clue whatsoever what an expected result would be for this plot on this map. So it's going to be oh so more interesting to see Bubble take shots at the killer side. Manages an early hit onto Parley as this pallet could not be on save forever since the boss tile was changed a couple of months ago. You really have no clear line of sight on the killer or are able to react to his actions whatsoever. Fain comes. Great prediction by Bubble is going to put Pale into the Deep Wound status effect now, thanks to the original pain. But the only effect that it's gonna have for now. Did he go basement? No, he's still running around. Oh, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, where are the scratch marks? Right, that's the perk. I thought he went into the basement then. Bubble will be able to land the second chain onto our survivor with. Oh, what the perk is that again? Lucky break, yeah, that's it. Bobo is gonna be able to land a third one also. So for oh, Palin not even gonna bother dropping now his Palin. Is any is a saver here? Bye. Doesn't sound like it. I don't hear any footsteps whatsoever. Bobo is gonna get the basement here also. My man's nodding in approval. He's got a one, two, a three events right around the basement. This might just be the game deciding for Eden and that he's got set up here. Is that a one? That's two. Yes, Dracula was right in the background. That is, might actually be even more. <laughs> wow, but what have yeah. you been cooking up here? No, it is three, pretty sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he, he definitely feels quite good in this situation right here. <laughs> Basement hook with the generators nearby. Wonderful region, not too far away. We do have one in the distance being popped. We have a second one in the distance being topped. <laughs> Brings us to three completed generators very soon. Main building is starting as well, but Bubble will not care about these generators. What's important for him the is box. the 3-gen that you he has available it. around the shack. And yet, I he came. is going for the box and will chase some additional survivors here. Doesn't get an injury though, so it was just to scare them off. We could keep them a little bit busy. I 100% see Pale going into the second stage here. There's no survivor close, so they're not quick enough on getting the rescue here we might even see that Pali is progressing all the way through into elimination and then if that's the case synapse better gets one of these three gens done because otherwise you will be in a very painful setup you know i feel like this is actually completely fine the setup that they've got they can easily just sacrifice the survivor and then just play overly safe on these other other generators because they do have one behind the truck that they can pre-leave extremely early and easily, easily or still to the main building without even having to take it. So if they go with exactly that, they, in my opinion, still easily six stage in this game because Bobo still has that know it in the back pocket. But as long as they don't give up any other hook stage for this middle game now, then they're looking in a, they're look, looking to be in a really good situation. Since Xenobite is still just a standard one thing movement speed killer that has the extremely powerful chase ability or general controlling ability but he doesn't have any other mobility besides just standard walking and slowing survivors down around him so they are still very capable of just playing this extremely slowly and it seems like Bobo is also trying to play around this by entirely abandoning this region and instead just trying to go for chase here to, to get more stages or he's just gonna try to get for, get a tag on tomorrow with that sloppy butcher. That's gonna make it oh so more annoying to get these survivors healed in the in the meantime. It seems like Sir is doing exactly what I just called out. Also, just gonna pre leave that generator extremely early on. Really doesn't have a reason to, as our previous center white player is now in chase. Gonna be able to dodge the ability that Bobo accidentally set in his own face. Not gonna be able. or not gonna be enough. But it seems like he's just gonna try to go for individual tags here. Ooh. And we do see some very optimistic swings here, chains coming out as well, and Jiggy has the nerves of steel! And I jinxed once again, I, I don't... No, 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 you didn't, you didn't. You didn't <laughs> I want to go! No! I jinxed myself for saying I jinxed it! This is the double mind game! J Jiggy going for another round here, going to take the chains, but he won't be stopped! 
once again the wow. patience coming out wow. being able to run bubble for a little bit longer who has so much patience and such nerves of steel when you need it in such a difficult spot when bubble is right on you and is about to swing at you not dropping the pallet multiple times and being right with it in the mind game absolutely insane performance by jiggy here and this saved so much time for synapse and they might take the end game soon someone put a 50 50 count on that face actually Mara is in quite a bit of trouble now the only survivor injured exposed to the chase now but ah uh, this might just turn it around if bobo gets the down onto the survivor then that is going to or change the outcome of the game with this hit tank coming not gonna be successful he's gonna take the impaling wire chain and slow it down so he can't take the hit unbelievable this is exactly what bobo needed they do pop the last gen if they oh if they both manage to escape here now that would be a true oh, loss however oh there's so much that can still happen here it's unbelievable so this was this is exactly what i was talking about you need one guy in the middle taking the chases and then the other two just focus on the generators and both escape but this is exactly what Bubo needed now he gets one stage for the exit gates are, are even close to being opened and now they're in this position where they can't they've already sacrificed this one hook stage and if piggy now goes down and gets face cam to death it's over This is where's the Noah? such an incredible back and forth here. And yeah, where is the Noah? That is the big question here we have to solve. Jiggy going back onto the hook. If this survivor would die, we would have seven stages, ladies and gentlemen, on three survivors. So we would see another set of mm. Cenobite on the red shop. Is there any change to this win I condition? Understand. Will it be Sir going down? Because if this is going to happen, and it seems to be the case, then it could be seven stages on four survivors, and then Ariandel would bring us into the tiebreaker, Chucky. However, then Sir needs to die on Hulk, or Jiggy needs yep. to be sacrificed, or anything like that. So if they find no one escapes death, then rescue Sir from the basement, we will all be fine. But with this being open and two survivors, yeah, they are going out of the door. So we will have eight stages on Ariandel. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for competitive Chucky. The good guy joining the DVD League scene. That's going to be even more interesting. I've not seen the killer much in com tournaments yet, even though I am fairly aware that he's already established himself. I mean, we've already all seen the different tier lists of all the different content creators in Dead by Daylight, and the general consensus that Chucky is easily among the top ki performing killers. Potentially an S tier killer, but most likely just looking, currently looking like a, a high A tier killer, which is also roughly where we've put him in our tier scale for the rule set. Yep, that's going to wrap it up for the first two sets between Arianda and Synapse. And since Bobo was actually able to get exactly what I what I have fo uh, foresaw for him to have to having to play around, this is going to go to the tiebreaker. One to one current standing, and it will all be decided in the upcoming set after a quick break, everybody. Now that's the first from DVD League. Hello everybody and welcome to set number three. The tiebreaker between Synapse and Ariandel after we've seen Dredge and Cenobite sets already being played out. Now we see Nightlife in Charles Lee Ray, the good guy. Or from now on we're obviously just gonna call him Shaki because come on, there's Charles Lee Ray, his entire legal name. But yeah, Night Knight hoping to find a survivor yeah. at the beginning of the trial in the locker, using the slice and dice to barely reach onto Jiggy. Someone's put in a lot of practice and already knows the the range by heart. And gotta say, the hits always look a bit funny at the end because his actual hitbox is larger than the animation, just like how, to, how people used to complain about Legion all the time when he was released. And Jiggy immediately biting the dust, going down incredibly fast, not even gonna be able to use the pallet in time. As the smiles are starting to split onto the generators, always I I, I just love the way this the killer also carries the survivors. That the the ghost that possesses uh, the the door always comes out and starts carrying the survivor. 
But yeah, let's talk about the add-on. So he's bringing the straight razor as he's about to get the next slice and dice hit. He's bringing the straight razor of the purple add-on there. Squire's hit successful slice and dice attack such as from Mangled. So it's basically swapping Bush on the ability as he misses on Tail Survivor. And someone drops down twice. See ya. Oh, I explain. Oh, well. Third non lone spit there. Talking too much. So gonna drop down from the top and gonna say that also it's not going to be the slice and dice though, so that is not Sophie Bush on him. And the other add-on that he's got, Yardstick, forming a scamper reveals the auras of all survivors within 12 meters of you for 5 seconds. So Nightlight coming in with two really powerful chase add-ons and we'll see throughout the trial how these play out for him as he's also Chucky vaulting the pallet and now he's using the slice and dice faking to use it for the window and instead gonna use it to drop down and that's an easy down on Jiggy. A second save already at five generators remaining. That is a lot of downs and a lot of work being done for Nightlight before even losing the first objective here. Does even confidently take the slug and checks a little bit on the gallows area what's going on. We do see a few scratch marks, so there's someone around. A little bit damage on a generator as well, and now I think we're going to get back and secure that first hook, uh, second hook stage onto Jiggy. So far, Survivor Team showing us efficiency. They are holding yeah. against it, but they will need some longer chases in the mid game here, getting a little bit of wiggle room back from Nightlight, who's currently applying some good pressure. And this hook here in front of the main building is one of the most wanted hooks on the Dead Dog Saloon. You have such a good insight yeah. towards the Gallows area, such a good overview, the main building is there as a rescue for the survivors but it's quite open so you can see if someone is moving in the nightlight playing huntress here chucky huntress throwing his knife into the back of the survivor really really good work here once again pop goes to weasel going to set the gallows generator a good chunk back and there we see immediately the survivor going into the main building one of the strongest main buildings in the game we'll hold some w here wasting as much time as possible but jiggy better get some assistance by his team here yeah that survivor is close to, to meeting the afterlife and it is going to occur Jiggy goes down, it slices and dices, makes Julian fries if anyone still remembers kicks from way back in the day. But a decisive strike comes in, is going to grant El Survivor some more borrowed time throughout this trial. But that's all that he's running on right now. We finally see the attempt at taking it come in, but to no avail. Nightlight is going to squeeze past Mordo and will be able to get the down as well as the first kill of the trial. A 3v1. At three generators remain, and I believe he has his scaffold three done here as well. If he requires it for the later game, not seeing, like I can't see the right side of him here, sadly. But yeah, that, oh, a beautiful crowd here, my sir. That perfect portrayal of how you have to play against Chucky. You can really abuse these small, tiny spots to avoid his ability, and that's exactly what Sir is going for here. Nightlight, the Chucky master, we could say. Getting rid of the Shack pallet as well. Yeah. Jiggy already eliminated. Three generators remaining, and the next injury being applied onto our ace. He's not in the best spot here. Red Dog Saloon just having this kind of TNL and moving around the house. The section, it doesn't catch the Nightlight. Already yeah. circled back, so this is going to be. A relatively quick down and this mid-game chase that we mentioned that needs to take a little bit longer grant some time for the generators and lead to some wiggle room is just not there and now we need to keep in mind that this is the tiebreaker so you don't have a chance anymore to go for another set the performance now really really counts and so far this is a five okay he's, wow, he's fine all right oh I was already scared that we have some sort of an internet crash there or something, but uh, looks good and we are going to move forward. Nightlight not really bothering so far about Pop Goes to Weasel, just if he randomly uh, comes across a generator then he will apply it. Really, really good. Um, oh, now we have the next survivor Pali already here. What I was about to say, really good spread yeah. of the pressure so far, constantly trying to keep the survivors injured even though the knife was a little bit too short right here but the next ah! hit should fix that that's going to be right here mordo the captain once again healthy i don't know what it is but mordo has a lot of responsibility today he had to pick up 
the teammates earlier. Now he's the only healthy survivor who needs to get a good chunk of work done. So Mordo needs to carry Synapse once again. I'm getting mad this guy legs right now. I think Mathis is in a bit of trouble, says Discord is down. Might be one of the recent crashes. Discord has some issues from time to time. We don't hear him yet, so let's go into some solo action here. Um, this is going to be the very last hook in front of the main building once again. Pop goes to Weasel, going to be very welcome for Nightlight here to take another chunk of progress from one of the objectives that is around. And we do see Mordo, our team captain of Synapse, just waiting out with the sprint burst here, making it around the corner in time, making sure that there's no injury that can be applied. Now we need to make sure that we are not getting surprised, but Mordo with perfect um, control of his backside won't be surprised by the killer here not giving any injury to Nightlight Nightlight on the other hand has a good overview over the generators Pop goes to Weasel still available and I think I hear a wild Mathis that yeah. reappeared yeah welcome back do, 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 do. wild Mathis appeared time to enter battle once more we see shocky use I, I also just love how nightlight is using the ability just to just for mobility's sake not even for the chases because that's also one feature that is often overlooked when looking at these killers abilities the same goes with hillbilly I mean, with hillbilly you practically always should be using the flash uh, the flashlight yes the chainsaw especially now with the update coming out we are all so looking forward to seeing that killer also oh, uh, anyway everybody in the community is it's og billy coming back we have nightlight it is currently sitting at five stages still needs to find a second survivor to take out of the map it's gonna oh, beautiful double vault here or double crouch under the pallet I've, I've actually never seen someone do that before that's really creative Pale is gonna bite the dust team that's gonna be the sixth stage for nightlight in this trial Yeah, and for Synapse, we need to start getting worried a little bit because, yeah, Sir is still alive. We haven't cut down the survivor team to two individuals yet, but it's definitely rising. The survivor team has a clock running against them. Nightlight is getting more and more hook stages. Pop goes to Weasel, will come out once again. He even rotates back towards the hook before kicking the gen because he knows that one survivor is already around. Mordo kind of lurking here, trying to get back towards the generator as quick as possible and i think nightlight's favorable target here will be ace because ace will be eliminated from the trial and that's exactly what we see he won't even um, care about the generator behind him in the house section that mordo is currently repairing because if he does get a second survivor eliminated the generator pressure will basically drop towards almost zero here exactly what you need and nightlight still has a lot of time as two generators are still standing great and quick down here in the yellow area and uh, Mordo not even able to get for uh, to get this generator in time they have to go for it together which also spreads some information towards Nightlight who will now achieve the move stage and then can go into the next stage here so Synapse in a really really difficult position might want to consider an end gameplay here you know, fun fact, the Chucky does actually have, uh, the, the weapon that he's got is called the Chef's Knife, and Seer in Russian means cheese, and Nightlight was actually just hungry for raclette when he was trying to go for Seer here. <laughs> yeah, we, that's two survivors eliminated now in the trial, and one extra stage on any of these. I'm, I'm sorry for that cheesy joke. Uh, yeah, awesome. Kale is gonna take, gonna go down next. That's gonna be the eighth stage for Nightlight, and it really does look like it's going to be a thorke the one generator remaining if Mordo does not successfully and you know we've can we've we've had this bit the entire time of this this reoccurring joke here Mordo again the last man standing the one that's got all the weight or the responsibility carrying on his shoulders i wonder what his shoulder press pr is at this point oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he knows it needs a doctor <laughs> <laughs> palais is still uh, is on the hook i don't I, it's really difficult to tell here. Should Mordo really go for this Anuk or just hide and hope to get the exit gates? At this point, you should try to scout where the exit gates are and then look 
one that's hard to look at from afar where Nightlight actually has to walk up to, and that would be the one to go for. We do see, oh, the crow, that's, that's just been alerted. And Nightlight usually has the eyes of an eagle, so I wouldn't be surprised if he does see Mordo crouching or suspect a survivor crouching in the corner. He's gone back to crouching now to not alert any of the wildlife around as Pale does f find the end of his road there on this very hook. Now Nightlight is probably just going to enter and detectable mode or, or sl slice and dice rather. Or his, his stealth mode, you know what I mean. Yeah, he's just standing still on hatch, so probably should try to go for an S strat here. It really comes down to where these exit gates are. That's going to decide where, whether or not this is going to be a 4k or one man out. Seems like Nightlight's just playing for time, though he is going to shut this down. Oh, these gates could be good. He's probably going to find an angle with third person. Oh, well, he's just on it. <laughs> I take it all back. The the my my heart oh, always stops beating when yeah. when a player is not immediately closing the hatch because I'm worried that they forget about the rule that they have to close it after the latest five minutes. Yeah, that's so why Spin like... isn't banned against them. Yeah, <laughs> because you don't want to end your regret. But that this is going to be a last great final chase by Team Captain Mordo Mathis. You pointed it out. Mordo, last man standing in all of these sets. Always the one who has to carry responsibility. Always the one who has to pick up the teammates. Or the one that is responsible of playing the end game here. So, um, Mordo for me, the MVP, even though we have another trial here. But the responsibility for this uh, person is just really, really really high and he's doing a pretty good job for all that pressure that is handed out but talking about pressure the pressure is now on the side of synapse because achieving a 4k on four generators done is an amazing win condition uh, ariandel just needs five completed generators but we have seen earlier you shouldn't word it as just getting five gens done, making it sound too easy because mm -hmm. there's a lot that can happen. And especially on Chucky on the Dad Dog Saloon. We are running behind schedule, so we'll keep it short. See you in a few minutes, ladies and gentlemen. This is the final trial to find a winner between your Codex and Ariandel on the survivor side. Will he be able to pull the absolute surprise once again like we've seen him earlier in set number one? Or will we see the dominance by Ariandel on the dead dogs? So Nightlight has put up a very, very nice win condition for the survivor team we just need five generators done but sometimes this is making you feel a little bit too good you get a little bit too confident and then the result looks way harder than it is set so let's see how hardwell is going to perform here at the windmill that's going to be a quick injury chucky right on his tail let's see if that's going to work out usually we do see body blocking coming out from a team like ariandel but maybe they were not expecting that they were the First entry so soon. Jokad going to gain some distance here. Goes for the slice and dies and actually managing to get Jokad down before he can successfully wall. This was a relatively quick down and definitely a great start into this match here. Daya Lobo confidently said that this is going to be the last game of, uh, between Ariandel and Sinas, but I'm going to say this might be the last game. We, we've had too many toys in our history. But yeah, we've, we're seeing a tremendous amount of den pressure already coming in by Team Ariandel on the survivor side. Quite similar to what we also saw by Team Synapse. Jokat's going to be able to get the pop goes in and in your heart we trust he's the only killer so far that was also able to beat Ariandel in the dread set so he might just turn it around once again in the good guy set also so anything's possible Jack Palut is going to be sacrificed relatively early the ca as the camera pans up that looked very interesting but yeah it's also it's just so nice to actually spectate a killer in third person I'm quite curious to see that it's quite interesting to see that he's using his ability there on that tile and he's just gonna go down yeah. that's not gonna be enough no, that's just never gonna be enough play. that's gonna be the second stage on trial ring also in the basement and a three down around i'm pretty sure it's jack on oh, no, it they didn't pop gallows that's that's the scaffold that's on the street or windmill and right in front of jack 
This is looking really good for Jokob right now. Absolutely, he manages to put himself into a very good spot again and mm -hmm. again. And he really puts all of it together. The generator setup he has, the hooks he has available, and the chase locations. And then the quick downs on top of that are just putting him in such a luxury position. Pop goes to Weasel, is doing a lot of needed work here into the three generator. The Gallows minus a good chunk of progression here on this generator. Meanwhile, guarding Hartwell, and just 30 seconds away from elimination, I think Jokart yeah. will not let that slide. He will use slice and dice, potentially even to go back with higher mobility. If you get a survivor removed with three generators standing, you would be in such a good position here. That's going to be Arima being injured, but he is going down into the basement because you really want to stay four individual survivors here for this trial. Arima happily sacrificing himself would be two minutes of hang time in the basement shack pallet has been used, just another filler. We all know it, so there's not much value coming out of it here. Yokarex going under yeah. the pallet. Will we see some spicy slice and dice? No, we'll see some mind gaming in the double down here. There's one survivor coming in trying to save Hartwell, and now it looks a little bit like things are falling apart, Mathis. Yeah, I was about to say the moment he gets that unhook in basement, it's over. But looking at this now, did, did he get the pickup in the basement? No, he didn't. That would have been GG, I'm pretty sure. He's still trying to come in for the save onto Han, however. It looks like Jokka can somehow turn this around. Yeah. He does need the Forky on to win this, come though. On. So it's gonna be extremely tough for Jokka. And <laughs> I don't want to jinx it, Dio. I mean, we've, we've had an experience with jinxing this stream so far, but this is really looking like it could be a Forky on one. A, a tie would be absolutely incredible because then we would see a, another set of Chucky. I'm totally in for that. <laughs> Actually, our yeah. schedule is our schedule is going to cry. That's for sure. <laughs> but. Uh... Let's see oh. what teams, teams are putting up here and actually winning the mind game. Le Magic being put down on the ground yeah. relatively quickly here on the mid windmill. Not even sure if that will be enough time to get that fourth generator out of the way that will be needed for the tie condition. Arima and Axe is also both injured, so they cannot take anything mm. risky. They cannot stick on a generator and smash it through here. So. It seems like they've heard my warning. They are going okay. for a full reset okay. here and. This is going to be dangerous because he Chucky see. has kind of... He didn't see them even though he was just meters away. That is a huge turn for the survivor team now because they can reset in peace. On the other hand, it means that our hooked survivor most likely goes into the second stage here. So even more advantage for Jokarex has his two Gallows generators. Kind of realizes probably that they are going for a reset here as no one is showing up on the generators but um ariandro will have a good challenge ahead of them here this is such a peculiar game and i'm all in for it there have been so many situations already at at which these game this game could have already ended you got samuel missing the reset there i'm just way the magic now hitting second stage also they even got the basement save right before death i i thought the moment they had gotten that so ever the basement was already over because that death and they had so much pressure on all these generators around but this generator that Jokka is currently right next to that was affected by eruption earlier and just because of that Exize was not able to pop it so Jokka might actually turn this around completely if he plays his cards well manages to land the hit onto Arima as well that's every single survivor incapacitated except for Exize our last man standing and he's now Filling in Mordo's shoes, who's been carrying all the pressure, or, or who's been had, who's had all this responsibility on his shoulder. So Exiles is catching up to that PR that Mordo. Jokart is still trying to find the survivors now. Arima still slugged on the ground. Also, it really comes down to whether or not he's able to find the boy, and he is able to find the magic again and the survivors stand on hook. That's gonna be a two v one. It's a 2v1 and two generators remaining with no pressure whatsoever. Jokart might just come and cut on both of these killer sets and win both. And I think if that's happening, then I have to steal the MVP title from Mordo. Even though yeah, I was we gonna say Jokart the unsung hero from the from the dead set earlier. 
Absolutely, like uh, and I'm sending it to Mordo because of all the responsibility, but what Jokat is doing for Synapse here is absolutely insane. The next slice and dice attack onto Arima, keeping it injured and now cross the Dead Dog Saloon because you really don't want to lose this generator. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, if we would have a 4K on four completed generators then we will have a tie and we will all go back if we have four generators and a hatch escape we will have a win on the survivor side of ariandel and if we get a 4k right here right now then synapse is taking it and making a turn once again what a close match here pushing us all the way into the third set the tiebreaker being needed because Ariandel and Synapse were not able to decide it further on. And now the tiebreaker with so much pressure, with so much back and forth here on the Dead Dog Saloon. Excise has been found, but that was a long time. Arima had quite a minute now on the Gallows area. Jokat needs to be yeah. careful that he's not overextending this current chase and corner attack. <laughs> not going to work but we see that access is moving further towards this corner of the dead talk saloon because arima is on the other side of the map working on the generators here the question is what is the progress on this oh. generator we do not have a pop goes to weasel available and that sounds very very far expecting nope. the drop here that came through but with the balanced landing arima already in a safe position we do see the kick in the distance will just be a few percent here slow regression access immediately rotating in expecting that chucky is going to follow arima but he already decided to make a 180 as well going back towards oh. the shack mathis this is a back and forth teams are not giving a millimeter to each other and there's no room for any mistake here this is so intense yeah, this trend warfare that we're watching right now. Exile's fight. That's the option. This might just turn oh. it around. And yeah, Arima's oh, not on any of the blinks. This is now also the thing with the slice and dice. Neither of these can even recover or heal each other because they both have sloppy butcher on them thanks to the ability. So Arima will be hurt if Chucky or if Yokot makes it anywhere close in the in the general vicinity of Arima, it's already over. Jokot is looking behind main right now, expecting us to be there. It really, once again, interestingly enough, or ironically even, comes down once again to the gate spawn. Where are the gates? Is Jokot able to just take the kill onto Exoys and then play the gate game? But he needs Hatch to be close to where both of these gates are also, so he makes it over to them in time. The third person, one thing that I also noticed Jokot using earlier, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, he used the third person perspective to look through the nooks and crannies in Shaq between those planks. Yeah, yeah. He positioned his camera down to look at the survivors, tr uh, trying to see any body part indicating that they're there. And Jokat could... That's also something that we saw Nightlight doing in the previous game. He used exactly that to see if Mordo on the exit gate. Yeah, he's just gonna wait here. Oh, I'll put him in. Oh, this is so rough. Yeah, this is this is insane excise now with the deep wound effect arima injured here running around this house trying to make some distance but chucky already back on him the generator has taken so much regression now and there's the down immediately again there's just no space for the survivors excise holding w away ds coming in clutch here i'm not even sure about it because when Chucky yes, is arriving too. over here, DS will already be out. Mending is needed as well. Wow. Your card, absolutely insane. Mordo, sorry, you have to hand over the MVP medal to your killer yeah. in Team <laughs> Setups. <laughs> This is Real. just absolutely incredible. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind, if they don't get a fourth generator, then a hatch escape wouldn't even matter because the first win condition that we compare is the generators. And at the moment, we have four completed ones on Synapse and three completed ones for Ariandel. So even with the hatch escape, Synapse would take it and they would mark the first game in Winter Circuit already where let's say the underdog is beating the stronger team yeah. and we have seen how close infinity was against elysium so we can tell that winter circuit is going to be a tournament full of surprises and i'm so hyped for it i know exactly why yokot is winning the set over Ariander right now everybody it's the lucky flannel
It helped Markiplier beat Five Nights at Freddy's back in the day, and it's helping Yokan as well to beat Ariandel. He's wearing the sweater, which Nightlight did not have, and that's why. <laughs> Skin difference. Uh, <laughs> the first thing that came to mind when I saw the loading in is the difference in skin. But yeah, now it just comes down to the gate spawn. Is XI actually gonna try to save? I really doubt it. Yeah, he's already ready on the exit gate. So we've got one behind the building here. Hat is behind Shaq. So if Yokan quickly glances over, using his third person perspective, he will be easily able to see XI. But if he plays the patience game, which I wouldn't doubt he does, this could barely just be. Uh, actually, does it win condition with the generator? Since generator is the most important factor, does it even matter? If they escape, no. It's, it would be just style points. Yeah, it's, I mean, they, yeah because it's a 4k on 2, so Jokot already won. <laughs> yeah, so if he closes the hatch now, it's it's over because the generator is uh, yep. locked. locked. So it's just a few seconds and Unbelievable. there is the confirmation access with an adrenaline your god for X. the endgame. But Jokot, my god, set number one, complete turn. Taking the set point from Ariandel, tiebreaker set, complete turn, taking the set point from Ariandel. Wow. This is incredible. Ariandel, basically, with a lot of players from Eternal, was handled as one of the favorites for this tournament here. And yeah, dropping good. in round one is absolutely. And it's all thanks to Jokonex's unreal performances and the consistency of his survival side. Jokot was able to... Ironically, also, the first set ended in a 4k1, and Jokot came into a 4k2. And what have we just seen? <laughs> Our dear Russian player coming in clutch twice for our team Synapse, and they will be able to defeat Ariandel in the first set. Not going to lose his bracket in brackets yet. <laughs> Might, still might happen. Ariando will drop down to the lower bracket and they're going to play around the risk that it could be eliminated if they do end up losing once more. But it's enough to save for now. They advance to the next round and we'll see who later on in the tournament will. These teams will be facing off. But for now, there's no clear, there's no clear take on what to say. Absolutely insane game we have seen. Congratulations, Synapse, to a fantastic performance. Ariandel, second chance in the lower bracket. We are excited to see you there because we are very sure that you will be a very dangerous opponent there that is fighting back the way into the grand final, um, potentially. So uh, keep it up. Great performance as we are used to it. Synapse, absolutely insane. I think you guys can really, really celebrate. Um, our schedule doesn't celebrate because we are 32 <laughs> minutes behind schedule with the long dredge matches. So we will not have a campfire chat for the third set. We are, uh, for the third match of the day, we will set it up. Um, you will be thrown right into the first trial soon. However, we will have two different casters for the second half of the day. So um, they will introduce themselves in the upcoming trial. But for me and Mathis, it's time to say farewell and Mathis. We said it at the beginning. Goodbye. Absolutely, and we said it at the beginning. It's been way too long since we cast it last time, and it was so fun. I don't even want to swear on Twitch. Um, it was so <laughs> beep fun. So far, fun. Um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Daya. But don't fret. This isn't the last opportunity we are given. There's still plenty, plenty of matches left. He casted left to be played by the players as well, most importantly. So there's still much opportunity, much hope. If the viewers also just don't despise us entirely, then <laughs> that we're definitely coming back for more. So it was an awesome experience. I'm glad I'm back, back to DVD League casting. After I've been extremely busy with a lot of other things going on in life. But I'm, I've got semester holidays now and vacation from work. That re there really couldn't be better timing for this now. Perfect. I've got an open schedule, everybody. So <laughs> stay tuned for more casting in the near future. Love you all. And after a short break, the next two casters to take their turn will introduce themselves with the upcoming matches, of which we still have many to play and watch. 
See you then. Enjoy the stream. Goodbye, everybody.